up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past few days where we do have some big topics to discuss. Again, firstly, more confirmation and more updates around Barcelona's superstar signing in the future with elections coming up for the presidential candidate at Barcelona and Barcelona lack of signings last summer as well. They are planning to invest big at some point in the attacking positions, i.e. around maybe Nico Williams or even Erling Haaland. Secondly, around signings, the free agent market in 2025 is freaking nuts. So many top quality players available and Barcelona have been linked with two of them. We'll give you guys an update around that as well. Some departure news around Ferran Torres and Ansu Fati. Injury updates, huge, huge, huge injury update on Gavi. Some other updates around the club, around the squad as well, mainly being around Kunde and Flick. There's a bit of a feud there revolving around the Alaves game, which of course we will discuss. And finally, we have three big logistic updates around Barcelona, around Espai Barca, the Nike deal, and also the celebration of the 125th anniversary of the club, where the club do plan on inviting big, big legends like Leo Messi, Busquets, Xavi, Iniesta. Question is, who shows up? and who doesn't but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes in this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it now, before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by Mikarera. Mikarera is a platform where you can invest in football players by buying shares in them, similar to buying stocks in the financial market. This means you can buy and sell shares in players you believe have the potential to increase in value. Now, the value of the player shares go up and down depending on how many people want to buy or sell those shares, not based on the performances in matches. Mika Data also has other key features as well, like real time market, player trading, seasonal events like for the World Cup, Euros, and Copa America, and community voting as well, where you can vote on the next player's stocks to be joined on the market. Now, have you ever been sure that a footballer will become successful? Well, now is your time to put your money where your mouth is and invest in players to prove to everyone that you have the ball knowledge that's needed in football. So what are you waiting for? Hit the top link in the description down below and check out Mi Carrera and invest your stocks in certain players today. Let's start off with the transfer news. Over the past few days, we're first going to be discussing the pursuit for Erling Haaland in the future, whether or not it's a reality situation or if it's just a uh, you know, social media myth. Now, for Vince Germano has come out saying that Barcelona have been linked with Erling Haaland in the Spanish press, but predicting their actions for the summer 2025 remains premature. Any decision will depend on FIP regulations and the outcome of the season. As of early October, the club is not actively pursuing any major deals for 2025. Holland is currently focused on Man City and there's no concrete movement regarding a transfer. Basically just sitting on the fence saying that right now, nothing's happening. In the future, you never know. So he's kind of, you know, protecting his reputation there a little bit while also, you know, trying to provide an early Holland to Barcelona update. Look, the reality is, I think Barcelona right now are mainly focused on maybe free agents and renewals. I don't think we really focus on signing a player for summer 2025 and there's other multiple things coming up ahead that I have a priority returning to the one rule going back to the camp no renewals uh, and, and then maybe free agent market that's what I think the club are currently looking at but they are having tabs on having a superstar signing this summer it's quite clear with the coming up that Deco and Laporta do want to have someone come in that will you know strike a light in the, the, into the fan base of Barcelona and at the Camp Nou as well. And with maybe Lewandowski aging and leaving, he's of course one of the faces of Barcelona. And you a new face to come in. And Erling Holland fits the mold as well. You have Mbappe at Madrid, Holland versus Mbappe, Al Clasico. It's just written in the stars at this point. I think there's a very, very good chance that in the future, Erling Holland will join Barcelona. I think when is the main question, whether it be 2025 or 2026. We'll wait and see how things do turn out. Of course, at Man City, Pep's about to leave. Uh, TK Birkenstein, of course, the CEO and the sporting director, he's leaving at the summer as well. So things are lining up. I'll, put, I'll say it like that. So we'll see how things do turn out. But again, Barcelona have been a long, of course, admirer of Erling Holland, and they are tracking his movements over the next year or so. Now, another player that can be that superstar signing for Barcelona is, of course, Nico Williams. He would have been our superstar signing last summer, but of course, he decided to end up staying at Athletic Club. Now, his brother, Anaki, has been speaking to the media about his decision, saying that, look, it's been a pretty complicated summer for Nico Williams. I feel very sorry for my brother because many things uh, were being said, and most of them were lies. He has taken it very well. He has all, He's the one who made his decision. He does not regret it 
and he is very happy at the club. And then following a midweek Europa League game last week, he also spoke to the media as well about can you guarantee that you will stay at Athletic Club beyond this season? And Nico Williams said, look, I'm happy I'm in Bilbao. I decided to stay here. It was incredible to see the crowd against uh, AZ Alkmaar in the Europa League. Look, I think Nico Williams' stock right now is decreasing a lot at Barcelona, mainly because of the other options there are in the market. We'll talk about that in just a few seconds. But I think the main reason right now why Nico Williams is still being with Barcelona is because he's Spanish and because half his friends are at Barcelona. Um, you look at how Rafinha is playing on the left-hand side. We don't know how well or how poorly Ansel will do this season. Again, other options on the market. I've been very, very consistent on this, and I'll say it again. If Nico Williams is available for the same price as last summer, 60 million euros, I think Barcelona will have interest, and I think they will be having him on the table for sure if Hansi Flick sees it needed to sign another left winger. But I don't think the club are too happy with the fact that of buying a player who said no to us last summer. Of course, you can look at the past, you know, Griezmann said no one summer, next summer, we spend 120 million on him. It's happened so many times where players wanna stay one more year at their current club, then they make the move to Barcelona or any other big club, uh, Real Madrid, Man City, Chelsea, I've seen it all in the past. So I think the club would be a bit butthurt about that. Also, they said in the summer as well, this is your only chance, the train only comes by once. Remember all those quotes in the media. So we do look a bit hypocritical if we go out and sign Nico Williams the next summer. So we'll see how things do turn out with Nico Williams. I think the option will still be on the table, but whether the Barcelona pursuit or not is the real question. Now on the topic of signing a left winger, Barcelona have been linked with another left winger that's not of course Nico Williams in Leroy Sané. Now Sport came out saying that Barcelona are interested in signing Leroy Sané next summer and this was then confirmed by Matteo Morito from Relivo saying that Barcelona are keeping an eye on Leroy Sané who will be a free agent this summer. I'll tell you what lads, the free agent market in 2025 is freaking nuts. I mean, it is crazy, and we have been linked now with Sonny. Look, Sonny is prioritizing right now a renewal with Bayern Munich, but if an agreement cannot be reached, you never know. Bayern have Leroy Sonny as a free agent this summer. They have Visual Kimmich as a free agent this summer, and they also have Alfonso Davies as a free agent this summer. All three players I would take of Barcelona, and all three high, uh, you know, high class quality players. It's going to be difficult, I feel like, for them to renew all three. I feel like one of them could slip. Could Leroy Sonny be it? Look. 60 million for Nico Williams or Leroy Sané for free? That's a big question mark. Of course, Leroy Sané is a fantastic player, but he's very inconsistent. Sometimes he's on form, sometimes he's not on form. Of course, Leroy Sané at Man City was fantastic. The first year of Bayern was poor. Second season wasn't too bad. Third season was poor, so he's very inconsistent. But on his day, fantastic player. Worked, of course, with Hansi Flick, our manager. So there's a lot of things that can go different ways. You can say, okay, sell Ansu Fati for 20, 30 million. Save his wages. Give his wages to Leroy Sané, who comes in for free. That could be an option, but I uh, would rather do that or rather, you know, do that, but also add 60 million on Nico Williams. All these, you know, questions will be down to Deco, Laporta, and Hansi Flick to decide, but keep your eyes on the option of Leroy Sané. I rate him. Would I take him? I mean, he's free, so you have his... I feel like there's no free agent you can say no to. That's, of course, being linked with Barcelona. That's, of course, a high level because it's just so low risk. He comes in, does well, fantastic. It's the signing of the century. If he flops, you sell him, make some money. I mean... It's really hard to say no to free agents, uh, in my opinion. So I would say yes for free. I would take Leroy Sané, but we'll wait and see what the club to decide and also how strong Borson's pursuit is. Right now, it's just general interest. Now, another free agent who Barcelona are keeping their eyes on for the upcoming summer is Jonathan David. My Canadian brother. I never thought in my life I would see a Canadian player play for Barcelona. We've got some options here. Now, the news actually broke from Sport, saying that Barcelona is keeping tabs on Jonathan David and are attentive on the player's contractual situation. And again, Matteo Morito from Olivo confirmed it, saying that Jonathan David from Lille will leave for free in June. That's for sure. And Barcelona are amongst the teams showing interest. With Sané, you don't know if he'll be free. Kemek, Davies, Trent Van Dyke, Mo Salah, all these players. You know, Jonathan, I think Jonathan Todd's guaranteed free agent. Same with Jonathan David as well. So there's something to look out for because they will be 100% free in the summer. Though David is focused on the present and not rushing his decision, Barcelona is in the race to sign him. But the deal could be complicated due to agent fees and salary demands as well. I will say this. Which Jonathan... He's come out multiple times in his career doing interviews saying that his dream is to play for Barcelona. I honestly do not believe if Barcelona show genuine interest, contact him, that salary will be an issue. I think maybe agent fee might be because again, when you're free, you got to pay an agent fee. I get that. 
I don't think he'll cause us problems salary wise. Being the first Canadian, probably the only Canadian in my lifetime to play for Barcelona is also a nice stat to have. Now I will say this, what's the plan with Jonathan David? He's a striker. You're going to sign a striker. You currently already have in the, in the roster right now, Paul Victor and Lewandowski as your strikers. Jonathan David for me is not good enough to be the Barcelona number nine, you know, week in, week out. He's good enough to be the backup option for sure. If he, is a, if he becomes a backup option, you're going to sell Paul Victor. You know, you twerk for him in pretty season, you give him a year and he doesn't do anything, then you're going to sell him. Is he going to be a replacement for Lewandowski? Is he going to have, are you going to have Jonathan David early Holland as the two strikers? What's going to be the game plan? Does David also want to come in and be a number two? That's also a big question. I think he's more so of a player that wants to go out there and thrive, be a true number nine, starting, uh, you know, at a more of a higher class club than Lille, where he's been, you know, very good for them over the past few years. But I would, again, with a free agent, like I said, with Leroy Sané, you say yes, because they're free and he's, of, of course, a really, really good player. I just really want to see a Canadian player at Barcelona. I think that would be so sick to just, you know, have. I do have some contacts with David, so maybe I'll see if I can get some uh, some details. But we'll wait and see with Jonathan. I think it's a situation where he's, you know, finally waiting for his move now. He's always been available. He's been available like 30 summers ago, 40 million, 30 million, 20 million, and now he's free. He's always in a player that you think is not good enough to spend a, a good amount of money on, like 40 30 million, but he's of course great enough to take for free. So we'll see what happens with Jonathan David, but again, Barcelona are showing some interest. Now, a non free agent who Barcelona are keeping their eyes on is Diogo Costa. They see him right now as the best option to come in to sign as a top level goalkeeper. Michael Rico from Relivo came out saying that Deco was at the game last week between Manchester United and Porto. In the Europa League, he was monitoring Diogo Costa, who right now has a market value of around 45 million euros. The club is actively searching for a top class goalkeeper for next season. Is Diogo Costa the one that Barcelona are tracking? It looks like it. We have Fernando Polo uh, leak it a week ago, and now Deco is at the game watching him. He's not someone that screams to me, oh, great goalkeeper. He's always been available for the past few years, kind of like a low key option for like 60 million. Again, I think right now the most ideal goalkeeper is Dibu, but I get it. He's like 33, 34 years old. He'll cost double this from Aston Villa. Probably looking at 70, 80 million for Dibu when he's that old. Uh, I know for a goalkeeper, age is not really that big a deal. He probably has a long time left. Also, he had a little bit of a late career too, but you never know. That's a, a big, big factor in my opinion. There's no one else out there you could say that scream. You know, someone that's so ideal for Barcelona. So this will be a massive risk. I'm more... Not worried about the goalkeeper, I'm more worried about the price. I think spending more than 50 million euros on any goalkeeper is very, very risky business, especially when there's maybe, I would say, two other areas in the team that need that heavy investment first before the goalkeeper. I will make this very clear. I believe 100% Ter Stegen will be the starting goalkeeper for Barcelona next season. That is, that's just my prediction. I, I, I would, of course, bin Ter Stegen as quickly as possible, but I think this is what the club will do. They will trust Ter Stegen for one more season because they really want to go out there and search for a goalkeeper. We saw this already before Barcelona when Bellas and Pinto uh, had to go and then we brought in Ter Stegen and Bravo. In the end, those were two correct decisions, but that's such a gamble for Barcelona at the time and everyone was kind of doubting it. Oh, an old goalkeeper like Bravo from Sociedad, a young German goalkeeper from Borussia Mönchengladbach, but it was, of course, Zuberata, the legendary Barcelona goalkeeper who was the CEO at the time. So, he, of course, he's a goalkeeper. He knows, I guess, Wagwan. So, he made some good decisions there. So, we will see how they turn out. Again, Diego Costa does not, you know, strike the light for me. I don't think we're signing, you know, a top five, top seven, even top 10 maybe goalkeeper in the world. There's a lot of potential there, a lot of growth that needs to happen very much. I think he's a, maybe a few years ahead of what Ter Stegen was when we bought him from Motion Gladbach. So we'll wait and see. But I still firmly believe that Ter Stegen will be the goalkeeper for Barcelona uh, next season, especially with him being, you know, missing out this whole entire season, basically. So we'll see. But right now, it's quite clear the club see Diogo Costa as the number one option to come in to replace, provide competition, the next goalkeeper in line for Barcelona. Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past few days. First up is Ansu Fati. Now it's coming from sport, not too reliable, but Barcelona are considering sending Ansu Fati out on loan in January, according to sport. Now it's not reliable, but I want to bring this up just because I want you guys to keep an eye on this because Ansu Fati not getting too many minutes. Again, the main thing with Ansu Fati that people forget He's on 150,000 euros per week. At the time, deserved. Fair enough. Right now, he is not worth that whatsoever. That is huge wages for like the seventh choice attacker and the third choice left winger right now at Barcelona. It is a lot of money. The reason why he didn't leave last summer was because Flick trusted him and also no other club that wanted to buy him, uh, get him on loan, could afford to pay even half his wages. But I would you keep I would keep an eye on a potential exit 
in January because once we hit December, our whole squad will basically be fit apart from the two marks, Ter Stegen and Bernal. If Ansu is getting barely, barely, barely any minutes, if Hansi Flick is playing for Min off the left ahead of him, Ferran Torres off the left ahead of him, uh, Pao Victor off the left ahead of him, Rafinha off the left ahead of him, if these all, if he, if that is the reality, I wouldn't be surprised if at end of January transfer window loan happens for Ansu Fati. I don't think he'll leave at the beginning or like the middle. I think it'll be more so in the end, last second, see how the squad looks, see where we are in the Champions League, what happened in the Super Cup, and then decide. I, I do see there, there being a potential chance he does leave in January, and that's why I'm bringing this up. So, we will see. I hope it's not the case. I pray and hope for Ansu Fati to thrive. I did, of course, sell my socks in Ansu Fati. Make sure you get your socks down below, by the way, with Mikarera, but... I do hope the best for him. I would love for him to succeed at Barcelona. So we'll see what happens with Asifati, but do not rule out a last week of January exit somehow for him. Now, another player that has been linked with the move elsewhere is Ferran Torres. According to Motoportivo, they're reporting that in Italy, they're saying that Juventus are showing interest in signing Ferran Torres. Again, the source, not the best, but I want to bring this up. Ferran Torres is coming into this summer, 2025. He will have two years left on his deal. So that is prime time to make a decision. Sell, move on, or keep. And I am so, so worried that Barcelona are going to keep him because of Vise. Because he plays well for Spain. He can play on the right wing, left wing, and striker. The Shark. I mean, it's just... He is probably the worst signing after Alonso during Laporta's second tenure. And it sucks because I was watching my reaction to when we signed him. Um back in the end of 2021 i believe it was and my god the hype for him was crazy at the time 60 million blah 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 he's been shite that first few months he was all right because he was just fresh blood we had we had our front three of fucking fran juglans or Gino Des. so anyone semi-decent as a winger was going to come in and rejuvenate the squad since then the double season was crap last season had a good like one or two months the shark whoa, whoa, whoa. rest was crap this season crap i don't know man i honestly feel like barcelona might lose him for very very cheap after we made that big investment on him but this summer we have to do something with Ferran because he's gonna go have two years left on his deal if the club decide to renew him whatever i'll just sit here and moan but that's not gonna change anything but he's just not good enough and to be honest i would say oh Ansu is better but Ansu Fati ain't proving it either uh, so far obviously let's hope this is the case i would love for Ansu Fati to just perform well the left wing then we realize he don't need Ferran Torres to sell him next summer for like 15 20 million that would be the absolute dream so we'll see with Ferran Torres again it's always gonna be interest with Ferran because of his versatility and for his uh stature as a forward but it depends really more so on Barcelona making that decision Let's now discuss some of the injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. Firstly, on your boy, the shark, Ferran Torres. The club released an official statement following the match against Alaves, saying that tests carried out showed that Ferran Torres has confirmed that he has a muscle injury in his bicep and his right thigh. The time of the return to training all depends on his progress. Again, right hamstring, a right thigh injury. You're expecting he's going to be out for a month. Have Miguel also confirmed this as well. He'll miss the following games you see on the screen there. Sevilla, Bayern, Clasico, Espanyol, Red Star, and Sociedad. There have also been reports from Mundo Portivo and Raccoon saying that he might be out for eight weeks, which is two months. To be honest, I don't care. He's not a player that I'm praying to come back ASAP unless we have other injuries, but I expect Ferran to be out for maybe a month, a month and a half. I don't think he'll be out for two months. I think he will 100% will be back before the next uh, November in national break. I also feel like he'll be back for either the Red Star or Real Sociedad game. I think he'll be back for one of those two games, to be honest. But we will see. Not an injury that we're going to miss out too much. But, of course, speedy and healthy recovery to him. Next update is a big one. Hopefully returning after this international break in Danny Olmo. Fernando Martinez from Mundo Portivo came out saying that Danny Olmo is working with Raul Martinez and Julian Toulouse, sometimes doing double sessions and sometimes even triple sessions, combining physio sessions and rehabilitation work. And the international break will be used to reach the maximum level ahead of the big games after the international break. Fernando Polo from Mundo Portivo also confirmed that Danny Olmo should be included and is expected to be in the squad list for the match against Sevilla. I don't think he'll start Sevilla. I don't think he'll even start Bayern, to be honest. Could start the Classico. I think the most important thing is a minutes against Sevilla, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, maybe even one half of football against Bayern, and then start the Classico. Again, he's a very, very important player for Barcelona. We saw how important and how imperative and how crucial he is to the system in those first three games he played against Vallecano, Valladolid, and Girona. So hopefully he comes back as soon as possible and as healthy 
as can be. But we are also expecting another return after the international break alongside Danny Almo and Fermin Lopez. And this, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is the big one. We've waited for this one for one year. It is Pablo Gavi. Now, Fernando Polo. Now, Fernando Polo from Motivo is coming out saying that Hansi Flick is highly considering including Gavi in the squad list to face Sevilla on October the 20th. He is leaving undoubtable feelings. He is leaving un he is leaving unbeatable feelings in training. Flick plans to take great care of Gavi's return, but he sees the player training with the team at a very high level. The coach sometimes has to tell jokingly not to go so hard, but he knows Gavi is like that. The match against Sevilla at home would also represent an extra injection of morale ahead of the big games after the international break. Even if Gavi returns and plays testimonially for Sevilla, he does not mean that he will play even more intense games against Bayern Munich or Real Madrid. They will finally be decided by Flick and the team depending on how they see Gavi. In any case, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There are no setbacks. He can return against Sevilla and the feeling of any discomfort he returns will be postponed until he is fully fine. So there's still maximum caution with Gavi, but right now it's looking good, bro. Squad list, bring him on like for the last, you know, 7 10 minutes against Sevilla. The whole crowd, way Gavi, Gavi. And then maybe, you know, we'll see what happens against Bayern and Madrid. I don't think he'll start Bayern Madrid even if he's at 1000%. It's just way too risky, especially with a footballer who has not played in a year to get back to match rhythm, match sharpness as well. But having him just in the squad list for Sevilla is, of course, huge. You have, of course, Sevilla, uh, Bayern, Real Madrid, uh, Espanyol. If he can start. The derby against Espanyol, that would be huge. I think that should be his real mindset. Because, of course, after Madrid, you have a week off until Espanyol. And that will be crucial. You know, if he gets some minutes, gets a feel of the grass and the sensation against Bayern Madrid and Sevilla, then start Espanyol. That, of course, would be huge. Now, Luis Rojo from Marco also confirmed that Gavi is expected to return to the pitch at some point this month in October. Which, of course, means post-international break. Sevilla, Bayern, Real Madrid, maybe even Espanyol. I believe that Espanyol is November the 1st or 2nd. Something like that. And finally, for Bitsi Romano came out saying that Gavi is absolutely flying. In training sessions, I don't know why Romano is coming out talking about Gavi in training, but nonetheless, again, the sensations are looking very good, very bright for Gavi. We are expecting him back at some point by the end of this month. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past few days. Firstly, the dilemma in the goalkeeping position. When Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona have considered the keeping in Acupena and Chesney in rotation depending on the competition the team plays, Hansi Flick will have the final decision. Now, Chesney has, of course, been officially registered for the Champions League and La Liga over the past few days. Again, I said this in the Goals TV video last week. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out on the community tab on the YouTube channel. Chesney, if he's going to play has to be the goalkeeper against Sevilla. If he's not the goalkeeper against Sevilla, you will not see him until Espanyol. Way too risky to bring him back in his first game in four months post-retirement against Bayern in the Champions League or in El Clasico at the Bernabeu. He either comes back for Sevilla, plays Sevilla, plays Bayern, plays Real Madrid, or we're stuck with Anaki Pena for those three games. I am shitting myself. Anaki Pena instills me with absolutely zero confidence whatsoever any shot on target cross coming in i will be shitting myself it's just the miles better i don't know but i'm taking the gamble i personally would bring Chesney in for sevilla get him fully you know fit ready to go and then playing for the rest of the games we'll wait and see what hansi fix the size i would bet my mortgage my entire life that in acupania will be the goalkeeper against sevilla byron and real madrid but let's hope that there is a better decision which of course is to the better testament of the team as well because chesney is the better goalkeeper than an acupania now, in other news in regards to Hansi Flick's decision in the team, we of course saw a lot this season that Hector Fort wasn't really too much involved in the first team until, of course, before the international break, he started the match against Alaves. Tony Juan Martin came out saying that Hector Fort is gradually winning Hansi Flick's trust. The coach fully trusts the player and believes in his ability. It was mentioned that apparently Fort wasn't really trying too hard in training. That's why Flick didn't really want to play him, wasn't too impressed with him. That's why we saw, you know, Gerard Martin and Kunde playing so much in the fullback area, of course, alongside Alejandro Balde. But in recent weeks, Hector Fort has to it up. That's why we saw him come off the bench a lot more against, um, against Getafe, against, Mon uh, against Osasuna, against Young Boys that started against Alaves. And we see how Hector Fort his fluidity and the chemistry in the team is just so much better than Sergio Dominguez and Jordan Martin. I honestly really, I, I will celebrate the day when Flick 
puts Hector Fort at left back instead of Gerard Martin. I think Hector Fort is a fantastic talent. He's a brilliant fullback. I think he can definitely mark an era at Barcelona in that position. He's so strong. He's so smart as well. Like we saw how well he held the line against Alaves and both Gerard Martin and Dominguez struggled with that against Osasuna and that shows football IQ and it shows how developed Hector Fort is in his career as well. So hoping to see more Hector Fort post a natural break. I think he's a great player. It looks like Hansi Flick will give him more minutes. Now speaking on Hansi Flick and his decision making, he did make a big decision in the last match for the international break against Alaves. He benched Jules Kunde. Remember, it came out before the lineup that was leaked, like five minutes, Kunde being rested. Hansi Flick said in the pre-match and post-match press conference multiple times, Kunde was rested, plain and simple. But after the match, Tony Juan Marte came out saying that Kunde did not start the match against Alves because of rotation, but because of punishment. He didn't arrive on time for the pre-match talk, so Flick decided to make the change. The German had already warned about punctuality on other occasions, so today he took action. We saw this as well with Flick in the German World Cup 2022 documentary on Amazon. I remember one tra uh, one training session, Julian Brandt came in late. He said, look, anyone comes in late again, we're going to have some serious problems. In the next pre-match uh, talk there in the documentary, I think Leroy Sané and also Julian Brandt again came in late. And he just yelled the living heck out of them. And then they didn't start the game against, what was it, Costa Rica, I believe it was. So... This is big, man. I, I see Kunde as, you know, a leader in the team. He's probably my favorite player at Barcelona right now. I see him as someone who's very punctual and cares about the squad. The fact that he was late. I'm kind of hurt, Jules, man. I mean, bloody hell. You talk about going to the gym afterwards, taking care of your body, starting week in, week out, you know, caring about the team, caring about how fit you are and late for uh, for pre-match talks. That's kind of crazy. But I get, and you know what? You have to back the manager in the sense. If um, I'm, I'm happy that this has come out to let the fans know. I think it's important, but... I question the timing from Tony Juan Marti. I watch rather him wait until like, the Christmas break and be like, oh, by the way, uh, for Alves game, Kunde was uh, was benched. It wasn't rotated. I think this coming out right after the game is not really great for squad morale because now everyone knows that Kunde was benched. He wasn't rotated. Flick will know. Kunde will know. The whole entire team will know. The whole entire fan base and other media outlets will know. So now the next time someone is benched, oh, was he late for training? Blah, blah, blah. So I, with Tony Juan Marti, I think he should have maybe delayed the decision a little bit. But I guess when he has the news... Yes, to release it. I understand that. I know I do. I do have a journalism degree, so I, I get where he's coming from. But yeah, with Jules, this kind of sucks for him. Uh, hopefully, it's nothing too serious. Again, it's nothing too serious. He got the punishment for being late, and that's it. But we're seeing uh, Flick now, of course, making his mark, making things quite clear uh, in the team. So we'll see how if there's going to be any other punishments in the future. We'll see how Jules Kunde learns from this. But again, he was not rotated against Alaves. He was benched due to punishment for arriving late to a pre-match talk before the match against Alaves. Now, in other news, Barcelona are involved in cases with two former Barcelona players with the outcome being revealed for one of them. The first one we do have to talk about is fucking Mateus Fernandez. Never in my wildest dream did I think I'd be talking about this Brazilian flop ever again. But he's come back up, but in a positive way. Sport came out saying that Barcelona will now save a lot of money on the termination of the contract of Mateus Fernandez back in 2021. The player initially went to court for unfair dismissal, claiming compensation of 14.8 million euros. A court in Barcelona also had ruled in his favor initially, but then Barcelona appealed to the High Court of Justice of Catalonia. The High Court reviewed the termination clause and concluded that the termination was not abusive and reduced the compensation amount to 731,000 euros. I forget what the actual initial compensation was. I think it was like two point three million something like that but Tavis argued that it was not right and went to the Supreme Court to appeal but the Supreme Court reframed the decision of the High Court thus closing this complicated chapter with this resolution Borsa now have a bill that is dramatically less than it was initially of course we bought in Fernandez for seven million I think we terminated his contract for two in the end now he gets 700,000 instead of the two million so big dub I understand why he did it because again I mean he just got pretty finesse but Game is game, man. You are absolutely wank, even though you barely played. Next case. This one kind of broke my heart a little bit, but now thinking about it, I understand why. It's with Sergio Aguero. Now, of course, when he had his uh, heart problems, he retired from Barcelona. And at the time when he retired, he forgave Barcelona the rest of his contract. I think there's like a year and a half left on his deal. The club thanked him, gave him a nice little send-off for a fail ball from his retirement. Everyone walked away happy. But now, in the Barcelona financial reports, it did state that Sergio Aguero demanded 3 million euros from Barcelona after terminating his contract. A resolution meeting took place between the two parties back in June 2024, but the talks are still ongoing. 
Bloody hell, El Cura Guero, man. To, uh, apparently, he wants three million because the insurance from his contract did not cover his heart uh, treatment. So he needed some. He needs some money to you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, pay off that, and he feels like Barcelona should help out. So I, I kind of get it, but a bit annoying, isn't it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this, but yeah. You know, apparently there's a meeting in the, uh, in the past summer as well where uh, we're trying to get some money off of Barcelona. I mean, it is what it is. And this is kind of far beyond the realm of how a fan should approach the game. But I'll let you guys know about it. I think it's an interesting, interesting case. But we can see what the um, outcome is. Still no outcome quite yet. Maybe Barcelona will give me maybe a million, a million and a half, nothing or all of it. I don't know. But it's very, very interesting that, uh, you know, Aguero coming in, asking, demanding money from Barcelona. I don't know what the whole entire uh you know case of his that he's uh you know implying to get this money so we'll wait and see how things would turn out i of course trust laporta in handling uh, these kind of situations now the final topic that i want to discuss before i end off this video is in regards to the three massive things surrounding barcelona right now and that's of course s by barca the nike deal and of course the 125th anniversary of the club that will be taking place at the end of next month in november firstly on the Nike deal, Luis Rojo from Marca has come out saying the foundations of the Borsa Nike deal is there and only a few small details remain. Borsa will return to the one rule after reaching this agreement and Borsa will announce the new Nike deal in the coming days before the end of October. At the latest, Borsa will receive 140 million euros per season that could drop to 125 million euros if Nike agreed to pay a sign-on bonus of 150 million euros immediately. That structure is very very interesting we always heard 100 million uh fixed per season plus uh you know 20 million in variables 100 million euros on bonus but now the initial fee per season will be 140 which is i don't think any deal touches that that's probably the biggest sports deal in the history of sports but that way there won't be a sign on bonus i think the club do need the sign on bonus i think it'll be very very handy of course but if you think about it the deal should have been you know 125 but you of course increase it to 140 so that's an extra 15 per season 15 30 45 blah 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 all the way till you reach up 150 over the course probably of a 10-year deal so you will of course make more money than that so it is interesting and of course this all came after barcelona dropped the case against Nike. Mundo Portivo came out saying that in August, Barcelona dropped a lawsuit that they filed against Nike, and in the legal dispute between them, they chose to focus on negotiating for a new deal, which will, of course, benefit both parties in the end, and now we're hearing more reports about an agreement almost reaching. I'm very confident we will reach an agreement with Nike like I was in the summer. Again, I don't know when. It could be like Luis Rojo says, end of October. I will bet my money that's not going to be end of October because Barcelona just love to do everything last second. I would hope it would be at least before the January transfer window. But again, this Nike renewal is absolutely huge for the club, not just for the money wise, but also contractually live, which I manufacture as well. Very, very key. Nike are very, very big around Barcelona. Now, speaking around Barcelona, we of course have the update on Espy Barca, the return to the Spotify camp. No, who, what, when, where, why, how? Now, Alina Fort, the vice president of economics for Barcelona, was holding a press conference giving updates around the Spotify camp. Now, she came out saying that we will have a capacity of 62,000 at the camp now until the works are finally completed in 2026. So when we do return at some point this season, it will be in a capacity of 62,000, which is very, very big, of course. A lot of stadiums, you know, I think the Emirates Arsenal is like a capacity of 60,000. The Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is like 60,000. I think the only cities that are bigger than Barcelona now uh, with 62,000 would be the Bernabeu, uh, Borussia Dortmund Stadium, Old Trafford, maybe the Allianz Arena. So, you know, we're still a top five biggest stadium in Europe, even with this, you know, half opening, which shows how big. Barcelona is. We are working to return to Spotify Cap now before the end of the year, but there are factors that could change our plans. Wow! I'm not surprised. I've been saying this since March. Barcelona will not return to the Camp Nou this year. It will be, I believe, around end of January, beginning of February. One billion percent we will return before the knockout rounds of the Champions League. That is guaranteed in my books. When? Could be November, could be December, could be January, could be February. It depends on how fast the workers go. It depends how fast everything proceeds. Uh, but I believe we will be back at the around end of January, beginning of February time. Because again, our contract with the Monge Week is also expiring as well. It also released some of the numbers in regards to the uh, season tickets for the you know last three, four months of the season. It's ranging between 300 to 700 pounds, which to be honest is not bad for about... 20 home games ish which is i think a pretty decent price so that's the update by barca she came out saying that firstly the capacity will be 62,000. secondly the plan is to return this year might not though so we will see i think again 100 will be there before february when though 
is the big question. Final update we do have is on the anniversary coming up for Barcelona. And according to Michael Rico, Barcelona plan to invite Leo Messi and other club legends on November 29th for Barcelona's 125th anniversary celebration. How they're going to do it, where they're going to do it. I have absolutely no idea. I think they want to invite the players mainly for maybe a press conference, a presentation, maybe to do videos and stuff like that as well. So keep your eyes on that. If Messi's involved, if he's not involved, we saw Messi, of course, uh, commemorate the uh, uh, retirement of Anders and Yesse yesterday, but he wasn't at the press conference. Uh, of course, he's still an active player with Inter Miami. They have, you know, they're now the final stretch of their season as well. So will that have an effect? To will he send in a video? I think uh, whether Messi's there or not won't really bother me. But will he send in a video? That is the question because again. Is the relationship with Jordan Laporta now good? Is it bad? Is it okay? Is it talkable? Is it manageable? Will he do it just for the club? Will he do not do it because he hates uh, Jordan Laporta? All these things will be very, very big in regards to Messi. I expect the likes of, you know, Busquets, Iniesta, Xavi as well. That's also another big winner, so keep that. Keep a lookout for that. So we'll wait and see what the club do plan. Uh, when they'll have the emblem on the kit as well. That'll also be pretty big, but expect some big celebrations on November 29th. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past few days. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, in the comments down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we did discuss. The main thing I want first, of course, is on that superstar signing. Who would you pick? Secondly, your thoughts on the free agent market. Who would you go for? Thirdly, your thoughts on the uh, feud between Kunde and Flick. Who would you back in this scenario? Would you hope that Flick does more of this in the future? And finally, your thoughts on Espy Barca on the Nike deal and on the anniversary of the club as well. We think the club will be playing on doing for the anniversary. And do you believe we will return to the Camp No before the end of this year? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.